Man, what's good with the collective? Y'all know we back with another banger, another reaction. I appreciate everybody who been tapping in, running up, and subbing up. If you're new to the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you always notified whenever we drop an upload. Y'all know we coming with about four videos a week, man. And it's for entertainment purposes as well. And we like and comment and subscribe to the channel. It helps the collective grow. Helps the collective get bigger, man. It helps more people who like this type of content tap in with this content. But I ain't gonna hold you, man. All I'm gonna say today, is you bigger than your circumstances, bro? We're gonna make it through it. I don't know what it is that you're going through, but I know everybody got their own different things. We'll be good. Trust me. I ain't gonna hold you. Let's get right into the video, man. Let's go. Nobody is talking about the fact Jeepers Crippers was seen flying around Michigan. They said he eats every 23 years, and this year marks 23. Today we're going to get in a little bit more in depth about dog, man, and I have some bonus content for you. An old news article about a military situation and the studies of Bigfoot. For years, there have been witness accounts of things unnatural, things unfathomable to the mind, things that you would only dream of in a nightmare. People perish from a lack of knowledge, and for centuries, people have fallen victim to the hands of the unseen. People have mistakenly ran into these supernatural entities, and for those who do survive, their minds will never be the same. Several eyewitnesses who have had encounters with these beings unfortunately do not come forth to the public due to the fear of ridicule. No matter how many ancient artifacts are left behind that depict and clearly show us that there is something there in our history that no one wants to speak about. Many things are hidden right in front of us, but nothing is ever new under the sun. Over the years, things seem to progress quite rapidly. In front of us right now, we have an exclusive article from way back in the day about how the U.S. military was actually taking this thing serious. Even in the 1970s, we had a map depicting the areas in our rural woodlands and forests where these entities reside suspected to be dog man type entities for years movies have always given us artists renditions and illustrations of these entities you got to ask yourself why hidden knowledge just placed right in front of our faces and it's given to us in bits and pieces and we're treated as such as a child with a feeble mind if people spent just a small amount of research they will be immensely buried in research. It's too much evidence to keep overlooking what we already know to be true. We expose these things due to the safety purposes of the public. It's all fun and games until you actually have a real life encounter. After my wild encounter in the summer of 2005, I knew right then and there that there was something much more to this world than we could ever understand. I mean, I always heard a lot of witness encounters from family, especially my granddad being high-ranking in the Navy and his experiences over his time touring across the country. But man, I would never think I would go through anything like what I experienced. There are several others in the same boat as me, you, so many we can't even count. The problem is, is that people have been desensitized so long that they seem to forget we don't know it all nor have we seen it all. Only a small percentage of this earth and this ocean has been explored truly. There are places on this earth that man haven't been able to reach. Speaking of portals, this is on a farmer's property right here with a dog man shifting in and out of reality. Interdimensional. And this is what I mean. We don't know nearly half as much as we think we know. And seeing is how we haven't reached the furthest most depths of the oceans, I can comfortably say that the supernatural is 100% real. And just because you haven't had an encounter yet, don't knock who has. Remember the old saying, it's no fun when the rabbit got the gun. The veil has been dropped a long time ago, folks. And these things have always been reoccurring like residual huntings. The problem is the cover-ups that's been orchestrated on mass scales. Keep God first and stay safe. Han aparecido estas criaturas de una tribu que vive oculta en los bosques de Indonesia, son nómadas. Por el día habitan zonas fluviales y por la noche se esconden en cuevas. No superan el metro y medio de altura, 
poseen largas melenas que no cortan por diferentes motivos, las usan para el apareamiento. Cuanto más larga la melena, más opciones de conseguir pareja. También a modo de cama para acomodarse en el suelo mientras duermen. Además las utilizan como camuflaje ante posibles peligros. Estas criaturas aparecieron en una aldea desorientados y les dieron alimentos que nunca antes habían comido. ¿Creéis que deberíamos dejarles desarrollarse de forma natural? ¿O tal vez la intervención del hombre civilizado les ayude a superar sus dificultades? Can somebody translate, please? And do y'all believe that's real or is that fake? When I seen it, somebody sent that one to me. And then when I got to it, TikTok and seen it, it said it was a tribe. What is that that they're wearing though? Like somebody enlightened me on that. Like what is it that they're wearing? Do y'all think it's real? Do y'all think it's fake? I don't know, I'm 50-50. But like what is that? Is that like animal fur or something? Yeah, that look, it look kind of creepy. It reminds me of, it's some movie. I can't remember the movie. And they found the two little girls. I think it was Mama. They found the two little girls in the in an abandoned house or something like that. And the, one of the girls looked like, yeah, they were kind of just, yeah, in the abandoned house. They've been living there for so long. It was, it, yeah, that's what that reminds me of. But I don't know. Somebody like me. Translate, please. Jaguar spilling some tea right now. Oh, my goodness. In this audio, you are about to listen to Jaguar is spilling some tea on Snoop. Yes, Snoop Dogg. In this audio, she also reveals some tea about Lauren London. And you know, everybody looks at Lauren London as the industry sweetheart. She said that Lauren London used to sing background for her, which I really didn't even know that. Jaguar Wright mentions Capricorn Clark. If you recall, Capricorn Clark is the sister to Lauren London. Capricorn Clark was allegedly assaulted by Diddy. He came out and was like, oh, she was stealing from me, and then turned around and cleaned it up and was like, nah, she just elevated in her work and she moved on, God bless her type stuff. This is all alleged, but let me roll this tea for y'all. You know, it was Snoop. And Snoop, man. Because I, I never wanted to believe it. You hear whispers throughout the years and you think that people are, and, and Snoop and all, I have always had a decent rapport, even though he f***ed me over. Um, I understood why he did it. And I never held him to it. You know, you and Martha Stewart rocking out on the cookie dish. It was supposed to have been me and you, but, you know, whatever. You know. But Snoop, Snoop got some answering to do. Because if you were capable of doing what they're saying that you did to Tupac, why the f*** wouldn't we believe that you were capable of doing it to Nick because he was about to eclipse you? Dang. All of your fucking secret meetings with Diddy and y'all fucking knew that they put Lauren on him. See, I know Lauren London. Lauren London used to sing backgrounds for me back in the day. You didn't know that, did you? Ah, hell no, I didn't know that. Lauren London used to be one of my background singers. She fell in love with my keyboard player. His name is Omar Edwards. Omar went on to play for Jay-Z after me, after leaving my band. Omar Edwards got Lauren London on to American Idol, which put her in position to meet Nipsey. And then she dumped Omar, who loved her madly, for Nipsey out of nowhere. All those skin diddy parties, all of the support that Snoop has for Honeycomb, You've been moving niggas out the way, Snoop, allegedly. But you f***ed up when you f***ed with Nip. Y'all f***ed up when you f***ed with Nip. Moved him out of the way because he was about to give Dr. Sabi to the world all over again, just like Lisa left out Lopez tried to do damn near 30 years ago. Y'all niggas ain't slick. Yeah, Lauren London was a contestant 
on American Idol. She just didn't make it. And when that fell through, the next thing you knew, she was a nip bed. Now you want to sit up there and talk about it wasn't all what it was hitting for. And you want to talk about this kid. You married a crip. You seed up. You don't get to walk away. And ain't nothing Honeycomb can do. Isn't it funny how her sister was working for him? Uh, Isn't that interesting? I guess that was part of the payment. His sister got to get a job working for the devil. Because I'm I'm accusing you now, Lauren. You work with Diddy to line up your baby daddy, just like Khalees. Work with Nasquiat to line up Nas. Any of y'all just gonna realize working with these niggas ain't gonna save you. <laughs> Dang. That's why Khalees career is in an uproar. She turned on her husband. And he fucked her. They didn't give a shit. Allegedly, it was Khalees that mixed Nasia Jones and made him lose his mind so Jay-Z could step into the spot. And that nigga, even though he was f***ing you, never kept his promise. I guess y'all didn't know that Khalees was f***ing Jay-Z on the side. Wow. Hell no, nah. ain't, we ain't never hear, hear that one. <laughs> well, I'm saying it now. Sue me if I'm lying. Khalees can be old news. This isn't about news. This is about motive. And opportunity. They stay using desperate starlets to line up the niggas that they want out of the way. Because the easiest way to get rid of a mother is to put somebody in their bed. Look at what they did to Bashir Gray. Charlie Mack found him a wife. See how that turned out. What, what do y'all need? How, 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 how much? I mean, I mean is, is, is it just... Is it just you refuse to accept that you were wrong? Or is that you just don't want the truth to be right? Which one is it? No, Lauren London isn't an only child. She has a sister and her sister was working for the honeycomb. Capricorn. Hey, but wasn't Diddy executive producer of Nipsey's album? Exactly. And wanted him to stay the fuck away from Dr. Sabies. Blind, it was a blind corporation that bailed his, his murderer out of jail. Yeah, that shit got a lot of layers to it. Yeah. <laughs> you keep people new. But they gonna know. Because there's this crazy bitch named Jaguar Wright that won't shut her fucking mouth up about it. It's about to get real, guys. Yeah, cause Kanye said they yeah they put people in your life. Like my trainer was CIA. He said yeah. they, said they put people in your life around you. Oh, he um, said Canadian intelligence. Yeah, Canadian intelligence. Yeah. yeah. Dang. I mean, they would have to. I mean, you think about these stars. They have hundreds of millions of followers and all that. You would have to have some type of control. Mm-hmm. They will have, they will want control over that. Like they wouldn't, your email list. Um, all of it, all of it. Phone, they don't understand. Phone. People need to be careful with these change.org petitions as well, because they're just honey traps um, to collect information, to collect data. The only part where she left me at was when she said Lauren London didn't, didn't win American Idol and she just got one up. Nah, that's not how that went. She was already in ATL. Nip wasn't even his career wasn't he wasn't nip yet. Maybe in LA he was nip. But when as far as like the East Coast and all that yet, he wasn't all he wasn't nipsy hustle that we knew. He wasn't him yet. He was getting there. 
In California, in LA in particular, but in California, he was huge. He wanted Lauren Lundy. You got interviews of him even saying that's what he manifested and it went into his favor. He said everything he envisioned happy. She, yeah, but it is a lot of layers to it though. She wasn't missing. That's the only one where I was like, wait, huh? I could have sworn she was in ATL. And I was, what, in seventh grade when that came out. And yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't gotten it yet. And he didn't, he didn't hit all the way up here yet. He was, that, if he was booming still, that was like, oh, seven, 2007. So yeah, I'm not, he probably was booming, but not out here yet. Nah, out here still was the hyphy movement. So it's like, yeah, Lauren had that name. She was already in a movie. So that's the only part where I'm like, uh. But I wouldn't put it past them that they sent, that they lined that up though. I wouldn't put that past them. But as far as like that little way she had named that, yeah. Snoop with Pop, high possibility. Y'all remember that one uh, one sign got murder was the case? Yeah. Now, here in the East Coast of the United States, the point of operation will be Atlanta because it's, it's the highest city in the East that will be safe from uh, the changing um, coastline. Here in the, in the West, the new capital of the United States will be Denver, Colorado. Uh, Denver has been set up, and they are actually moving things. It has been activated, <laughs> just so you know, which is why we have uh, many federal units moving in here, as well as departments and agencies. They are already here, and more are coming, so it's been activated. I'm not aware that you know this, but for the last four and a half to five years, they have been moving the National Archives out of Washington, D.C. to Colorado. 18 uh, wheelers go in under DIA, uh, every international airport, and some things are being stored here. Others are being moved to other locations using the underground tram system. Uh, so there's quite a bit going on, and, and things have been, the timeline has been moved up. In Europe, uh, nations are preparing the best that they can. Um, in England, I know that they are moving equipment to the north of, uh, of Great Britain. Uh, they have many underground facilities there. They're doing the very best they can. However, it's an island. I don't know how well it's going to, to deal with that. Um, <laughs> have prepared in 2025. I saw something so devastating that I don't even think half of the people on earth would want to be on earth <laughs> if it happens. Most like the United States is divided down the middle and all of the middle is water. How in the hell is that going to happen? I know y'all just seen that map. Texas is gone. Ain't no Louisiana, Oklahoma. It's a Colorado, though. Remember the Denver airport? They say all the, the bases is up under there. All of the, the biggest, the biggest uh, underground city is in where? Denver, Colorado, where they got out outside, inside the airport, the reptilians, 
it's a Colorado, but everything around Colorado is gone. Ain't no California, Seattle, Washington. You, oh, you, you, you barely in there. It looked like the majority of you gone too. And everything else, ain't no Florida. Ain't no East Coast. I know y'all just seen this map. Imagine trillions of gallons of water. How is they going to separate the lands and that's going to be water? Is there going to be, how can, what kind of explosion can happen so big that it separates and divides the country and lets in the waters from the ocean? I'm not getting this. Why is there no Oklahoma and no Texas and no New Mexico? And it's going, no Iowa. And it's going right up the middle. What could happen that it would divide the land and allow for a new ocean to fill in the middle? Somebody please explain this. Because this map, means that there are millions upon millions going to die. That map is kind of crazy, though. But I was wondering that, too. As far as California, we know it. In, from Seattle to California, we know the, the San Andreas Fault. And then someone else in the comments put a whole nother uh, earthquake that they don't even tell us about in California. And, there's, and he said he did his research and there was more. The thing telling us about. I gotta go through the comments because I screenshotted it. So when I go through the comments on my next video, I'm gonna try to, I'm, I hope I did. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of screenshotting different comments, stuff y'all telling me to look and dive deeper down. I'm trying to find that one for y'all and I'm gonna go ahead and put that one in the video for you. Because, yeah, they don't tell us about about the other ones. They just tell us about a few, few main ones. That's it. Mass evacuations for Americans? Huh? Huh? Did you hear? Um, it would be imprudent and irresponsible if we didn't have folks thinking through a broad range of contingencies and possibilities. And, um, and, uh, and certainly evacuations are, are one of those things. Um, and given what's going on in the Middle East right now, I think it's perfectly reasonable. I think it would be imprudent and irresponsible if we weren't. Uh, doing some kind of contingency thinking. Fear? Am I fear mongering or is the news fear mongering? I'm just giving you the information and presenting it to you if you did not know. Remember the star that used to come across the screen? The more you know. You have the White House, the media. Let me just say we all know it's the media. We all know what they do. Yeah. But nonetheless, planning for contingency if the problem arises or comes to a heightened state in the Middle East. We're not in a heightened state? Is this problem in the Middle East have anything to do with the state that is not real? And, and, and Palestine? Who voted against the ceasefire? Oh, we know. A state that is not real in America. So, you're now blasting on the air a contingency plan for mass evacuation. That would be kind of hard to do with all these immigrants here. Hmm. Am I right about the immigrants coming here in the first place? And you know what's crazy? When you talk to people that are around the world, like I had a conversation with someone in South Africa, I talked to people in Great Britain, they don't have borders either. Yeah, allegedly. I mean, like, isn't that interesting? You think what's happening in America is only happening in America? The only difference is, is Europe's people, if you've not paid attention to Europe, they're standing. You know what the American people are doing? Going to work. It's going on about their death. They don't give a fuck. We're doomed. Fear mongering. It's fear mongering. Peace of God. Our history is forever lost. We have to pay money to find out our history. And when I talk about this, shit, 
tear make me so sad. It almost make me shed tear because sometimes I still look at pictures to this day and see a black man home when his hands tied behind his back with fire coming up off his feet. I'm like, God damn, how many ways you trying to kill him? He already can't free himself, but you still put fire on his feet too? When I look at that, I look at that's my people. He could, you know, the generation down, that could somebody be, be a relative to me. I always think about what have we done as a species or as, a, as, as people? What have we done so much for people to hate us? Why? Why what? Why? I don't understand it. And for that reason of me not understanding, I know a lot of people don't understand it. And if you ain't, if you ain't lived in it or if you ain't lived in the skin like this, you'll never understand it. That's why I speak for it. And that clip is for somebody who said racism don't exist and said that we just trying to keep division. I'm not arguing with you or people who think like you because there's still people like me who have to live certain life, who, who have to go through certain things and experience certain things that other individuals might not have to. When I'm talking about people who might not be a minority, I'm talking about the minorities. We go through certain things. There's certain things that someone that's Asian or Latino had to get called that I don't have to get called. Names that offend them that don't offend me. So their experience is different. So the racism does exist. Same way with us. We gonna get called something totally different than what somebody else might get called. We might not like that. People might look at us a certain way based off how our hair is done a certain way because i mean yeah the way we dressed if we tied it up we wearing too much of one color it's a lot of different things but yeah somebody said racism don't exist you know my reply was at that point and it's the last time i'm replying to that you don't have to experience it just because you don't experience it don't mean it ain't out there though and i'm speaking for the people who do have to experience that I ain't arguing with them no more. If you don't experience it, you don't experience it. If you think it create division, then that's what you feel. We feel like we already divided. So now we just bringing up topics that we see at the forefront. They need to be discussed. Things we have issues with. And if we feel like we discussing that and us discussing that offends somebody, then they need to move around. Because we need to have these topics. We need to have these conversations on these topics. Simple as that. And the more we speak on it, the more you're trying to tell us it ain't the case. You sound like the problem. Out this morning, I wanted to leave everybody a little message of hope. And uh, the deal is, look, a lot of people think there's a magic solution in recovery. There's not. There's not. Look, I spent most of my life, I'm going to tell you, before I got this six years, look, I spent most of my life in and out of rehabs, in and out of detox, listening to people say, you need to go to rehab, you need to go to detox, you need to uh, try this program, you need to get this sponsor, and letting people make choices for me. Let me explain something to you. There's no magic solution. There's not. Recovery is possible, but it's po only possible when you truly want it. If you don't want it, you can go to 10,000 rehabs and it's never going to happen. You can recite 10,000 slogans out of the big book or say, oh, the steps, the steps, and use all that stuff and say, oh, this is going to work and that's going to work. But guess what? You're just doing lip service. You're just talking about it. This is what I want to tell you this morning. If you really want it and you really want to stay sober, you have to give it up. You have to give up things that are causing you to go back. And what that means is you might be putting yourself in situations that's causing you to relapse by being irritated or letting people discourage you or being around certain people. And you notice that even when you're doing good, oh, I've got 60 days, oh, I've got, in which that's a miracle. One day, 24 hours is a miracle. But at the same time, if you're going right back to the same situations that keeps you messed up, then you're going to go back. Eventually, you're going to be frustrated. You're going to lose your composure. Your character's going to get out of whack. And then eventually, it's going to lead to relapse. You can't expect for change to happen if you don't change your surroundings and change the person, places, and things. Rehab doesn't fix you. Rehab doesn't repair the issues. Rehab doesn't take care of the years of struggling and problems you've had. And people go, yes, but it's a start. Yeah, it's a start. You can disappear and be away from everything for a while. And of course you're going to stay sober. But immediately when you get out and you put yourself back in these circumstances, you're going right back to your addiction. Now, look, I'm not trying to say things to try to make you feel good. I'm trying to tell
tell you what you kind of do in order to get sober. Now, for me, it took some really hard, right? It took prison. It took a lot of really hard things to wake me up, but I did wake up. And look, let me tell you something. It was The only thing that happened was I refused to go back to the way I used to be. I changed. I became a completely different person, probably a little more frustrated and angry at myself for not doing this earlier, actually. But with that being said, yeah, I'm not fast to go out and go on dates and try to get in relationships. I stay away from people. And uh, that's what it takes for me. You've got to realize you got to do what's best for you best for the people you love, your family, your children. And by doing that, you do what's best for yourself. So with that being said, yeah, you can recite the big book to your blue in the face and go to 6,000 meetings a year and, and all these wonderful things. Oh, if you don't go to a meeting, you're not going to stay sober. That's, that's bullshit. It only works when you work it and working it by first things first. And that is admitting you've got a problem and saying, look, I've got to change my situations too. It's not just not drinking or not using. And the newcomer that does this needs to go to meetings where he can listen to people and be able to speak himself. Don't go to a meeting where they're like, shut up, you don't, you don't need to talk and all that. And you got some miserable person with 20 years and thinks he's got all the answers in the back telling you to be quiet. He needs to shut up and let you talk. Because I don't know, for me, somebody that's got some sobriety, I get more from people that are coming in and it keeps me sober than I do listening to somebody who's miserable and been a dry drunk for 20 years. So with that being said, look, I hope you have a great day. Do what you got to do. Do you first. Don't care what nobody thinks. I don't care what nobody thinks about me. I do what it takes to stay sober, and by doing that, I help myself. When he say that he been woke, this and that, like, I just want to go ahead and point something out. When somebody tells me, not him, excluding him, because I, I agree with everything he said, and I like how he was coming. It just sparks an idea for me to bring up, bring up a little quick topic. When someone does that and explains to me, um... How long they been woke? I don't really care. Cause to me it sounds like they bragging and they trying to convince to me something that really they should be trying to convince to themselves. For me, I always wanna know what caused you to wake up to see things for what they was. I'm more curious about that. So when people come to start a conversation with me and they be like, oh man, this got me to wake up. I'm instantly all ears because I'm curious about their journey. Because everybody got a journey. Everybody got a story. But when somebody just jumps in, and, not him, but I'm talking about just random people talk about it and be like, oh, I've been woke for this long. And then they start trying to give you something to think about, telling you what to go learn. I'll be like, wait a minute, bro. He trying to convince himself right now. That's why he telling me. He trying to convince himself. But that's that's how, that that's just a quick point I wanted to make. But I like that clip. I like what he's talking about. And I agree with him. I agree with him. Start with you. You gotta want it. That go for anything too, though. Years old, and I've never seen a baby picture. Yeah, I ain't never seen one either. I don't know nobody that knows somebody that's seen a baby picture. And when you see pigeons, they always sit them on electric wire. Where did they sit before they was electric? <laughs> This is sad to see. Extra sad. Do you see above my head? Black church have collected 800 billion with a B in 10 years. But this is my question. What did you do with all that money? Did you invest it back in the community? You actually as a pastor's can actually give out loans back to the same people who gave to you for houses, businesses, and every other thing in the world. You could have bought an Amazon. You could have bought a whole franchise of McDonald's, Pizza Huts, Beggars, Giordano's, Wendy's. <clears throat> All at the same time. The whole franchise. Not just the hundreds, the whole franchise of all of them at the same time. But yet our grandmothers and mothers and daddies giving their money to these pastors and getting nothing back in return. Lights getting cut off. Cars getting repoed. Now, evidently, 
they don't pay taxes, so that means they're not in slavery. So this is what we own. This is what we own. You could have bought 50 Nike factories and taught kids how to make shoes. You actually could have bought Hollywood film studios to make films. Or the whole Tyler Perry lot, which is an estimated $200 billion. So you got another $600 billion over. But I say that to say this. I pray for my people. This is why they own nothing and have nothing. And our civil rights leaders and pastors, they're all in together. So if you wonder how immigrants keep getting these loans and they open up businesses, this how they done it. This, this, this how they this how they done it. And I always I I literally I literally just had this question. Not even this question. I just I just had this talk with my sister like maybe not even three weeks ago. And that's where it made me so mad because like we was talking about this and then I just so happened to come across this video. I didn't even know I had the video. Cause it probably would have made me mad a long time ago. But I, I literally just Hey man. It's a cold world we live in. Okay, so supposedly this one was taken in Argentina and was uh, recorded there in February of this year. And guys, I'm telling you, that's some weird stuff now. I mean, I don't think that's CGI. I just don't, I don't know. Is it a drone? I mean, it's lighting up the whole place. It's, it's maneuvering really fast. You can go back and watch it. It's a pretty interesting video. It's, uh, you know, I haven't seen one like that in a while. That's, that's pretty interesting. It kind of reminds me of the video a long time ago that was one at an airport in Japan where it made those same type ringing sounds. You know, I notice every little detail when I recognize a UFO video from, a, you know, a former video that kind of reminds me of that. And, uh, you know, leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Let me tell you why that, because I am the woman who he shot in the face in that 1999, December 27th, 1999, Club New York shooting. I have told everyone ad nauseum since then, even the surgeon who did the surgery to take the bullet, I got shot in my face with a nine millimeter, excuse me, nine millimeter hollow point bullet called a cop killer. I literally, have told everyone and never changed what I said. I watched him. I got pow pow in the face. I watched him fire the gun. I've said it all this time. Even the surgeon who did my surgery to, to take out part of the bullet fragments that was aspirating into my lungs and try to remove as many bullet fragments as possible, testified in the criminal trial that while they were putting me under, I was screaming, Puffy, pew, pew, me in the face. He testified in the criminal trial. It is in the record. They all knew he did it. Everybody knew he did it. But he paid off the club bouncer named Sharice 
and all these other people and the club owners with their video to hide the video. That's his MO. I told everybody that. This man almost took my life, has traumatized my life, has caused undue harm, irreparable damage to my life, lied his behind off. I've had all these youngins on the internet harassing me. I need, to this day, I still need to go back and look to see why he did that. Like, <laughs> what led to that altercation? For him to do that? Puffy tripping back then. Ain't that what led? Did J-Lo stop dealing with him? I think it was, I'm not quite sure. I was still super, super young. I think I was like six years old. <laughs> six years old, man. But we made it to the end of this video. If you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell so you always notified whenever we drop them uploads. I know we coming with them four videos a week. And it's for entertainment purposes as well. It's been a good little rundown today. But I ain't gonna hold you until I see y'all in the next one, man. I'm gonna let y'all go. We gone. Hey, yeah, mm, I just check my count. Check, sheesh, at the amount.